right, my last guest up this evening is a wrestling veteran. Um, she has made quite a career for herself, and I'm honored to be joined with her on this holiday weekend. I'm joined with Melissa Coates. She's with me right now. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Kenny. How are you? I'm doing real Thanks good. Thanks for having me. Happy pre-day before July 4th. Like, I'm like, not sure what you got planned tomorrow. I actually will be wrestling a show um, for FDCW um, Temple, Georgia. So that's what I'll be doing. Cool. Hopefully well. celebrating July 4th with a victory. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Melissa, and happy belated Canada Day uh, to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I am. Uh, I am Canadian. I lived in the states for many, many years, though. Um, yeah, I grew up in Thunder Bay, Ontario, actually, which is like 40 minutes from the Minnesota border. And uh, my two brothers actually moved from Thunder Bay to Windsor, so now I, I, they live close to the Detroit border. border. <laughs> so I uh, I end up up in Canada a few times a year, usually for Christmas or birthdays or that sort of thing, visiting with family, and occasionally I'll, I'll wrestle up there, too. I got some um, first time is going to be wrestling in Edmonton coming up in, in mid-August, so that's only the second time I've been in Western Canada. Usually I'm in Ontario in that area, sort of central Canada. So throughout your career, you have wrestled in Canada, you've wrestled in America, and obviously... The yeah, I wrestled in Puerto Rico. I actually just got back from Puerto Rico not too long ago. Uh, first time I was out there, I wrestled for WWC, which of course Colas Colon, um his promotion, uh, his promotion. Um, and of course, you know he just Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer this year. I was actually out at the the WWE Hall of Fame um, ceremony. It was fantastic, and so was Mania. I was out there writing a, um, a story for um, for a Canadian website, and a friend of mine in the in the, the Fed gave me a ticket. So it was fantastic. And I went to the after party after, and you know I trained I trained at developmental, so I pretty much know the majority of people in the WWE, like the Bellas were starting out when I was at Deep South, and um, I saw, you know, Brie Bella was with Daniel, and she actually uh, gave me his his wristlet to get into, you know, just to be safe, because um, I know most of the people in the WWE, but she gave me his wristlet so I could, you know, have no problems getting into the, the WWE after party, after WrestleMania party, and it was great. You know, I have a lot of uh, friends there still, um, I trained at, you know, I've been at two WWE developmentals. I was at um, OVW, so I trained with people like um, Damian Sandow, um, Dolph Ziggler, you know, those are a couple of the guys that are uh, that I trained with that are still left, you know, who currently are on television. I trained with, you know, Beth Phoenix. I trained with her. Melina was there at the time, Nikki James. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of people. I always joke that I'm the... I'm the diva who never made it. It's a little joke I do, just pretty much because I know like a lot of the people who made it really big. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, you know, I had opportunities too. It's just it's it's kind of a rough business. I think it's a little different sometimes if you're a fairly muscular girl. Like I was very muscular when I first when I first started out when I was at OVW, but I was only five foot five. I'm sort of a an odd placement, I guess, for a girl who's muscular, as muscular as that. But I, I used to um, kind of be like Diesel to Jillian Hall. Jillian Hall was at OBW and I was there, and I was usually paired up with her as kind of her bodyguard sort of thing because I was, I was so much. I wasn't taller than all the girls, but I was just so much more muscular. Like uh, on the independent scene, I've actually spent a lot of time. Like not lately because I'm a lot more slimmed down, but. A few years ago, I was, I was wrestling men a lot of the times, like NWA Anarchy, uh, which AJ Styles came through, and uh, a few other people. I think Abyss mate came through there, too. Um, I used to on a program there, I think it was four or five years ago, four years ago, maybe. Um, four or five years ago, I was, I was wrestling guys all the time. So, it's, um, you know, I have a, a history of doing that. Actually, up in the Northeast, I was just doing a couple of shows with... Uh, the Sabu, um, I wrestled men up there too, but you know, the crowd still really, they really get into that. They still really, really are entertained by women wrestling men. You know, that's sort of one thing you don't see so much in WWE anymore. You know, you saw a little bit of it with Beth Phoenix, just a little bit when she was in that Royal Rumble. The last time you ever saw a lot of that was, of course, of course when China was wrestling 
you know, Chris Jericho and, you know, men for the intercontinental title, WWE. And, you know, I, I think it's, you know, a little bit sad that they don't do that anymore because there's a big group of people that are, like, a lot of fans actually like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's sports entertainment, and there's a great deal of people who, who are real fans of that type of match. I know most of my intergender matches on YouTube get more views than my matches wrestling women. You know, there's just a, a big interest, I think, in kind of the battle of the sexist sort of thing. Not that I'm necessarily promoting it. Like, I'm perfectly happy wrestling women, too. I just know that from an entertainment point of view, there's a lot of a lot of fans into watching women wrestling men. So you you mentioned, you know, going up against men. And what mm -hmm. I, what, what I want to ask you, Melissa, is... When you first started going up against men, did the men that you worked with, were there any concerns of, you know, how they're going to compete with you? Or did you, or were, were you just like, just treat me like everybody else? I can take it. You know, I can take the. Oh, it was perfectly fine. I mean, I, you know, I'm a professional bodybuilder too. At one time, I was ranked ninth in the world. Um, I'm, I'm pretty big compared to most girls. I mean, I'm not really. I mean, back in the day when I was wrestling men a lot. Um, I mean, now I'm smaller, but I'm still, compared to most women, I'm still, like, fairly muscular. A lot of more women are, I mean, I'm under 140 pounds, so, like, I'm muscular, but um, I'm slender. So it's a little harder for me to wrestle men nowadays because, in general, men have bigger bones and they're, you know, they're, in general, taller than 5'5". Five five. Um, but, you know, back when I was wrestling men pretty, pretty steadily, you know, a few years back, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big deal, you know, I mean, I, I, I never had any issues with anybody at NWA Anarchy, I mean, I know some, some guys I've wrestled places, they just refuse, you know, they refuse to, to work the program properly, some men just do not want to, you know, put over women wrestling, you know, so occasionally I have dealt with guys who weren't the best to work with, um, but the majority have been good. You know, and it's like these these guys got to kind of realize it's entertainment. You know, if you're if you want to fight le legitimately and not do sports entertainment, you should be doing MMA. You know, like honestly, a certain degree of egos I don't think should be coming into professional wrestling because it's it is it's sports entertainment. You know, if you're really mad that you have to lose to a girl to continue a storyline, I mean, you should you shouldn't be doing you know entertainment style wrestling. You should be like doing MMA if you're going to make that big a deal with it. You know, but unfortunately, you're, you know, there's that, there's a lot of, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, egos in professional wrestling. You know, there's a lot that goes on with that. But, you know, I guess that's typical of any sort of entertainer. I completely agree with you. Like you said, regardless, male, female, big, tall people, it's all entertainment and. You I mean, good home. God. I mean, I've had to lose to, like, girls who are way smaller than me that, you know, I mean, keeping with storylines, I mean, you know, professional wrestling is storylines. It's like soap opera sort of stuff with, with you know, with, with physical activity in it. And there's, you know, there's there's a rhyme and rhythm and things are, are planned, you know, like it's, it's storylines. And people have a job to do, and that's what they're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to do your job as best as possible for the person who is booking the show. So, I mean, that's the way it's supposed to, to run. <laughs> I guess some people have issues with that. But, you know, I mean, I, I wrestled girls and got pinned by girls that were way, you know, nowhere near as strong as I was. But, you know, that's, that's, that was my job. <laughs> that, that was how the storyline went. I, as a fan... I've been a fan of wrestling since the early 1990s, pre-attitude era. I completely yeah, understand. Yeah. And and look, you're doing your job, and that's all that matters. I'm entertained, so I, I, I'm satisfied. And everyone, you can follow Melissa on Twitter at Melissa Coates. Yeah, my Twitter, yeah, it's Melissa L. Coates. Oh, Melissa L. Coates. I just Coates, wanted to make me. sure. Yeah, Melissa L. Coates. And my website is melissacoates.com. And that's spelled M E L I S S A C O A T E S. So it's one L two S is and T E S at the end. MelissaCoats.com. Twitter is Melissa L Coats, and I have um, 
a couple, actually three Facebook pages, to be honest, because I, I like to keep in touch with everybody. So, um, yeah, so um, message me. I answer all my mail myself. I'd love to hear from uh, from any fans or promoters or any comments, criticisms, advice, suggestions, whatever. That's fine. I'm 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 open to any sort of um, information. I I sell merch on my uh, website as well, and I, I put all my postings from my my shows, upcoming shows, and photo shoots, and all that sort of thing on on you know every piece of my social media. Um, and as well, I meant to mention too. I've also wrestled in Nepal, so I've wrestled in a third world country as well. That was kind of important with your question that you you mentioned before. That was definitely an interesting one in a lifetime sort of trip. I'll say that um, I might end up going back there again. It was uh, it was you know you're treated like a superstar over there, like the the. the <laughs> Nepali, I guess that's how you say them. They like were like, oh, you're like Pamela Anderson. Like, you know, this was a few years back, but you know, it's very flattering. I guess not. There's not too many blondes walking around um, in the in Nepal, apparently. <laughs> so, but I mean, we wrestled in Kathmandu in front of uh, me and a group of different people from different countries, like Japan and Australia and um, Chicago. Where else did people come from? I don't mean Chicago as a country, obviously, but. You know, I, I represented Canada, um, but um, yeah, we it, it was a really fun trip. Made some really good friends. We still keep in touch with each other, and uh, you know, it's twenty thousand fans in Kathmandu. It was like absolutely crazy seeing that many people out in the crowds, and there was dignitaries there. So it was treated like, I mean, we were treated like huge stars over there. It was, our, our poster was painted up with, on the side of a building, just like huge, and. Uh, then we went to Bukhara, which was, um, which is like the tourist city, and um, you know we were paraded around the street, and people would just run out, and you know it was just it was it was a really fun experience. It's a little rough because it's a third world country, so you know it was not you not like your normal like apartments and stuff like that um, that you have in North America. So it was a you know a little rough for that way, but you know it was still a fantastic experience. I would do it again. You know, the experience is, is worth, uh, you know, the fact that it's a little bit harder to to take care of yourself in a third world country. But it was a fantastic trip. So um, anyway, thank you so much for having me on the show. I know we don't have a lot of time, so. Well, uh, I, I, I wish we can we can keep this going, but I got about two more minutes left. And I'm definitely. Oh, you do? Like, okay, good. I definitely would like to have a part two of this in the future. Um, yeah, yeah, I have a lot of stuff going on. I have, a, I do some film work too. Um, there's a film. I'll promote this one at least because it's, it's pretty big. It's called uh, 350 Days, and this is like a big documentary. And you know, I was lucky. I, I actually got interviewed. Next, Marty Janetti, you know, wanted me to get interviewed, and I know some of the people who are involved in the project. And Bret Hart is a huge part of this. And um, I was interviewed when I was up at the. Uh, when Mania was in, in New Jersey, and uh, 350 days is basically the number of days that a wrestler back in the territory days would be on the road. So that's why it's called 350 days. And, and what the um, the the filmmaker and uh, the man with the idea for this um, film, I, hopefully it will be in theaters. I'm not 100% sure. I know it'll be on some pay-per-view channels or HBO or something like that. Um, Fulvio Cicero, I believe that's how you say his name. Um, you know, he's, he's presenting, you know, wrestlers for the hard work and the things they do. It's not all a negative story, like, you know, years ago, Beyond the Mat, actually. You know, you remember the film Beyond the Mat? It came, it, it was just very negative, and then the wrestler movie that came out with Mickey Rourke, it all comes out very negative, like very negative on, on the lives of professional wrestlers and their personalities and you know, character or lack of character, uh, lack of character, is how it sort of came across. But um, you know, in the past few years, we've all seen people like Jake the Snake was a big topic, and beyond that, he was one of the um, the guys that were interviewed. And you know, I, I, I he just got inducted in the Hall of Fame this year, and he gave a fantastic speech and talked about how TDP yoga like helped him fight his demons and. You know, he's all into his family now, which was very, very different in the Beyond the Map movie. If you have, haven't seen it, you should check it out. And I believe it was produced by Barry Bloom. And, um, you know, the 350 days is it's more of a positive view showing how hard wrestlers work and, you know, the life on the road and 
you know, it, it's more of a, a positive spin on things. As far as I know, that's what I've been told it's going to be presented at. As, but uh, but yeah, I, I um, as, you know, obviously I wasn't wrestling during the territory days, but um, I don't, I'm not sure how many women were included in it, and I was just, I knew some people, and it's in the right place at the right time, so I did get uh, get interviewed for that. And they have a face, uh, a, a page on Facebook as well. I think I have that. I'm pretty sure I have that on my timeline somewhere, but I'll put that back up. So that's an exciting project. It should be out, um, I guess, within a year. Well, Melissa. So, um, that's some of the other stuff I have going on. Wrestling, modeling, I just actually did a shoot. This is my uh, Independence Day shoot, so I hopefully my webmaster can get those 4th of July Stars and Stripes shots up tonight and for tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I, anything dealing with entertainment, that's pretty much entertainment and being physical. That's pretty much what I do right now. So I'm, I'm doing what I love, you know. That's, of course, it would be a lot more fun to be on WWE television because then you're also making you a good living. But, um, you know, I, I love what I'm doing. I'm having fun doing it. And, uh, you know, I also train people. So I'm kind of combining all my years of experience and my, you know, the different things I've done and things I've learned through experience. You know, I'm uh, combining that uh, into training and helping other people, too. So it, it's, it's all good. You know, everything's, uh, everything's good in my life and hopefully in yours, too. Well, Melissa, I want to thank you so much for joining me this evening and uh, continue success. No, thank you. Yeah. And uh, we definitely got to do a part two in the future. And uh, Yeah, definitely. I've, I've done quite a bit in my life. I've had a lot of different sort of career interests. And, uh, you know, I, I do talk a lot, I guess. <laughs> hey, I have I, a lot to say, <laughs> well, let me, which is let much better than not having much to say, right? So, hey, but, um. Let All right, fantastic. Keep in touch. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Melissa. And I have no problem with you talking. I mean, you're all good. You know, I'm just hang. I'm just hanging on thank to every word. So, thank you, everyone, for listening on this pre Fourth of July Independence Day edition of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Thank you to all the everybody. Guests. Be safe. And I have, please, yes, more importantly, please be safe. Cops all will be. Hunting you down if you do something stupid. So just uh, be <laughs> Yeah, you'll have to wrestle me. <laughs> yes. You'll have to wrestle me, and I can be pretty lethal sometimes when, when I want to be. <laughs> well, uh, All right. thank good, you, Melissa. Good night, Kenny. Thank you. Good I'll night. let you sign off since I'm All right. well, thank you, apparently everyone. overtaking your show at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. Thank so. you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Everyone, you have a good night. Have a fun and safe holiday 4th of July weekend. Good night, everybody.